Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I'm going to conduct Skylon re-entry testing and to do that I'm going to reduce the payload. We barely got to orbit last time so I'm not going to carry as much this time. We'll aim for maybe uh, 8 tons, let's say 8 tons and go with that. Okay fine, 7.88 since it likes that better. Uh, but yes, that will be our cargo and then we are going to try and bring it down. Now, whether that's going to work or not, let's take a look at the center mass and center lift without the cargo. We will release the cargo. And that's it fueled. And we'll, we're probably going to have some leftover fuel, but with it completely dry, it's like that. So, it's pretty close, but mm, who knows if it's close enough. For the shell, it was like needs to be within one meter, so... Uh, we will see whether it works, and I'll be able to figure out pretty quickly whether I need to move the center of lift, uh, or uh, center of mass, probably, for front or back. That depends on where they distribute the other systems in the plane. If there's a heavy avionics unit right in the nose, of course, it, you can move the center of mass further forward. If you have the avionics unit, like, maybe in the tail, then you're going to have the center of mass further back, so... Uh, when the whole thing is dry, after all, the rest of it is just uh, empty fuel tanks at that point. So, we will see whatever ends up making it work, after all. Alright, we are off. We probably need a little bit more runway. And throttle down. Oh, oh, oh. Don't go down now. Okay, a little bit wiggly, but we are in our climb. We are past the speed of sound. Okay, we are on Smart ASS. Okay, final bit of air breathing acceleration at 28 kilometers. I'm waiting for the hydrogen to get basically on par with the oxygen so we don't have excess. Some sources said it go gets to Mach 5.4 so we can hear the engines not getting much thrust anymore but well still nearly 800 kilonewtons not bad. Okay, pitching up and switching mode. Okay, we are in space and accelerating. We're looking at maybe having 200 meters per second after we reach orbit. Not much, but it probably will be enough to get back down. It looks like we are actually short of hydrogen. I let it go for too long, maybe. Okay, well, uh, 213 by 148 with 187 meters per second left. And see us? Okay. Skill rotation. Open the cargo bay. I mean, it's pretty low orbit, but it's in orbit for us in KSP. Undock. Okay, so 211 after we get that out. And now it doesn't look like we had too much, uh, too little hydrogen. It looks like we we're about right. Maybe a little bit of extra for jet engine mode. We'll see. Okay, I think we're just going to go once around, and it'd be nicer if we round out our orbit first, but actually our apoapsis might be really close to where we're going to do the deorbit burn, so it might not be necessary. Uh, it's not exactly close. I'll round out our orbit first and then come down. Well... The very black skyline against the very black background of space. Uh, not great. 
Planet Shine. We've got plenty of... Well, we could pump up the vacuum ambient light, but then it makes it look white, so I'll we'll just pass on that. Apparently I don't have forward pushing RCS thrusters. I really need those. Somebody suggested that I might have had an OMS engine. I definitely don't have that. But yeah, I can't do forward pushing. So this is going to be touchy. Well, okay. Yeah, so I'm going to have to add some more RCS thrusters to it. Now, normally I would do the Dior burn around here. Looks like uh, practically as expected because the RCS thrusters are really close to the center line, it being a very, very long, thin body. Uh, it's not got great roll control with them. It might need RCS thrusters on the wings or on the engine pods or something. Well, that's a little bit harsher than I would like. Then again, it's probably going to get a lot of lift at being a very light, large body. It's supposed to get less re-entry heating than other things because it's so... so light. But I'll try and lift the periapsis up a bit, I think. Okay, that's a good enough periapsis. C11 will be gentle. Okay, we'll get to re-entry attitude. Skylon at dawn. Okay, we are at 100 kilometers and so far is so good. Uh, there's a little bit of pitch being used, but not much. We'll have to see at lower levels whether it's significant or not. Currently still approaching the west coast here. Well, the body is glowing red here at uh, 82 kilometers. Red-ish, but not threatening. And still the pitch is pretty good. On the bright side, we know it can fly because we took off with it. Now, that was with basically a thrust-to-weight ratio greater than 1, so there is that. Whether it can glide or not is somewhat different, but we have sort of the basics down. We are going up now, though, but that's fine. And it's going up earlier than uh, even earlier versions of the shuttle would. These days, in 1.12, the shuttle doesn't even go up that much. But because, even though it has tiny wings, because it's basically empty, uh, those tiny wings get more lift than the shuttle's wings, given that the shuttle's body is really heavy. It's not just empty fuel tanks. It's a little bit tough to tell the scale of this, but the, but the Skylon's body diameter is greater than the shuttle's. It's also quite a bit longer. Well, there's Baja California and the west coast of Mexico. As advertised, Skylon can slow down earlier in the atmosphere. And that is why they aren't using the shuttle's heat tiles for it. They are using a ceramic skin of some kind. Though, so, of course, we're a long way off from them figuring that out exactly. So, need to get the engines first. Somebody had asked me in the comments to a previous video on this, whether I thought it was viable or worthy or something, and my answer would be, well, if they get the engines working, you know, I mean, the engines are worth it. The other details about Skylon in particular can change, but... The most important thing is getting the engines right. Okay, we are striking out over the Gulf of Mexico. 74 kilometers, we got a bit of a bounce up. Still, the pitch is only being used a little bit. 
really at this point I would say it's doing surprisingly well. I didn't think it'd be this well balanced. I thought I would have to tweak it a little bit. Might be even a fraction of a meter, but right now I don't think I should tweak it. <laughs> it's too good. It's better than better than expected. We're losing some hydrogen and oxygen, but actually I think that's boil off because of the heat rather than actually using the RCS. Uh, RF boil off. I mean, we're getting 31 kilograms per hour and the boil off loss is increasing. We need to be careful not to lose too much speed. We need to pitch down, otherwise we're going to stall. But not too early. We can see Tampa Bay right now. If everything goes well, we should be able to turn the jets on to get back to the runway. Uh, we might be overshooting a bit. Again, we only did it uh, on one orbit, and I didn't try to use cross range, I didn't roll to try and aim for it, otherwise we probably could have gotten in line with it a little bit better. But this is not too far off anyway, especially since we have jets. Mind you, there is the issue of unusable fuel though. I don't actually know how much of the hydrogen the jets are actually going to be able to use. Did I have my Bahama runway here? <laughs> um... I do. Bahama runway. Um, maybe we'll go for that. <laughs> I don't know. We could turn back. But the Bahama runway would be more convenient at this point. Even now, it's great on pitch. You can't really see it, it only renders within 100 kilometers. I'll start pitching down now. See if that goes smoothly. I mean, at 28 kilometers, it could use its ramjet mode at this point. Gonna try and switch to atmospheric autopilot, this might be risky. Trying to turn here. Okay, well, I'm switching mode. And we have thrust. Not for a long time, though. Well, it says zero meters per second. We'll take whatever we can get. Oh, there we go. Wow, it it dumps speed really fast. When it doesn't have the jets on. Okay, well we're gonna stall like that. Uh, I feel like that's wrong, but maybe if I switch mode... Yeah, it gets more drag in jet mode. Okay. Fine. Yes, that makes sense. We can close the intakes and it gets less drag. I didn't realize it would do that, but... Okay, fizz warp. I don't know if we're gonna get to our runway or not. We'll see. But re-entry testing worked fine. I didn't have to make any changes, so the version of this previously released can get through re-entry without any problems. 40 degree pitch, not too far off from Cape Canaveral. A little bit of adjustment on the retro burn would suffice. Let me just dump the rest of the oxygen. No problem dumping oxygen into the atmosphere. 
subsonic it glides fine without having issues. Okay, it has rendered the scenery. I don't have any air brakes though. That could have been handy. Now I need to bleed off speed without going too far on that. I don't even know what the unfueled stall speed of this would be. We know what the takeoff speed is, but that's with it fully loaded. Well, certainly we're too fast right now. I'm just gonna go all the way around. I mean, it is sort of a dart, so it, it gains speed a lot when you descend. Well, we'll have to try for it now. Well, uh, yeah, air brakes. Really, really need air brakes here. Well, we'll see what happens. Okay. Oh, 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 don't do that. Okay. Uh. <laughs> hmm. Well, we ended on the runway. Uh, we didn't start on the center line, but we ended up closer to it at the end. And we made it! Well, we, we didn't make it to Cape Canaveral, but that was down to the re-entry uh, location and the uh, periapsis that we set on re-entry. I set it to 11 kilometers. If we set it to zero, which I which is about what I do for the shuttle, maybe less than zero, uh, we probably would have done a better job getting back to Cape Canaveral. but. Uh, since I didn't have the OMS engine on here, and I guess I forgot to put backward facing RCS thrusters, um, we couldn't do that accurately. So one change I'll probably make is backward facing RCS thrusters. But so far the version I had previously released is good, and I'll think about, but it's not getting the payload capacity to orbit that was advertised, right? It's supposed to get like 12 to 15, and for this mission we only carried 8. Eight's not bad. I mean, you can do stuff with eight, and I could come up with some things, or maybe we could have a scaled-up version, and I'll think about that. I'm pondering a version with like four of the Saber engines. How exactly we're going to make that happen, and you know, in terms of where they're located, would be interesting. But anyway. Uh, maybe you guys have suggestions for where to put the extra engines. Do we just put them on the outside here? Uh, I guess the reason they didn't put it on the body was because uh, the rocket engines would torch the body or something like that. That's the only reason I can think of. It'd probably be better overall, but anyway, I'll leave that to the general discussion. For now, it worked, so I'm going to leave it here and take the win. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I will see you next time.